Demon's Souls for me was what Dark Souls 1 was for many others. It was my first Souls game. First time playing, like many others, it destroys you. I was confident in my abilities as a gamer, but this game and the franchise just comes at you like no other. Past experiences had no value, and the game reminded you every step along the way that you needed to know your place. The world of Demon's Souls is bleak and gloomy all throughout. Even the original trailer lacked vibrant saturation, which only fueled and emphasized the game's sense of hollowness. Almost all the locations had an abundance of death, and because of it, you were always on the edge of your seat, never truly feeling safe or comfortable. For its time, sure there weren't as many details in the smaller elements compared to today's standards, but the overall tone and lack of light some locations provided were more than enough to keep you uneasy, combined with the enemies and their habits and their natural habitat. Story-wise, you had a brief understanding of what was taking place, but the true value was in its hidden lore. There were a ton of NPCs whose backstories were never clearly revealed, but hinted at by their current surroundings and even item descriptions. You could simply play the role of the adventurer wanting to slay the old demon, but over time you began to see an underlying narrative that ties everything together. Then you start adding in the worlds and what they contain, environment, hidden items, the enemies, and bosses, and see how politically each one has been affected by the other. None of the bosses were simply there for the sake of being there. Through game design and story-wise, they all had a purpose and history to their respective locations. On your first playthrough, you are more likely to skim through and miss the subtle connections, but your perspective changes when you notice these differences. It allows you to appreciate the game's elements and begin to realize how much depth there is in the Demon Souls universe. The different worlds aren't as easily as connected, lore-wise, as how Dark Souls 1 lays out each major area to the next. However, the five different worlds you do explore hold on their own just fine and they are massive, especially Tower of Latria. In terms of weapon and armor variety, it definitely is the simplest out of the franchise. Demon Souls had a less is more clean approach mentality, whereas its sequels began experimenting with weapon movesets, spells, and provided an even larger wardrobe to play with. You weren't playing fashion souls with your buddies, but really took into consideration the value one piece of item had. Whether it be for a buff, defense, certain resistance, or even for its lack of weight, you were very careful with what you equipped. You also weren't swapping weapons back and forth, but sticking to the one you had for a good run, because materials weren't easy to come by. As for overall gameplay, level design, progression rate, and difficulty, I would say it's one of the most punishing games of all time, not just the one in the franchise. One of the biggest reasons I find is due to the lack of checkpoints. Dark Souls 1 and 2 has many examples of bonfires between levels or some right before a boss room. Yes, you do have to work your way through countless enemies and traps to unlock them, but Demon's Souls was not so fortunate. The only real checkpoints were the archstones dropped after defeating the area boss. Some checkpoints are very close to the next boss after a shortcut has been unlocked, but for some areas like World 1-4 and World 5-2, it is a very, very painful road back. And if you die, which you will, you would only have 50% of your max HP. There is a ring to bump it up to 75, but you are using one of the two ring slots you have in the game. And Demon's Souls didn't have an SS flask like the other games, it instead gave you grass. Different types of grass provided different levels of health restoration. Now you can stock up to 99 in your inventory, but finding or carrying that many was highly unlikely. If you entered a fight and ended up using all your grass, and still died, your next life would be left with nothing. You didn't have an SS flask that recharges per checkpoint or reset on death. One of the most unique features of the game was its world and character tendency. The tendencies are basically a spectrum that shifts closer to white or black, depending on your actions in the game. For example, dying in human form shifts the tendency of the world you're in closer to black. Defeating a boss brings it closer to white. The game scales enemies depending on where you are, but also increases decreases the souls gained from enemies slain. Closer to pure black world tendency, the more souls you obtain, but harder the enemies were and achieving pure black world tendency would change some of the enemies to be black phantom versions. Character tendency was like a moral compass. Your actions with NPCs and other players would brighten or darken it. Certain side quests in the games, collectibles, and secret items were only available in certain conditions. Not only did this add replay value by spicing up the playthroughs, it created a sort of karma factor to the game. NPCs could potentially interact differently depending on who you were and what the world tendency was leaning towards. 
Or maybe a weapon could do more damage if your soul was pure white or pure black. Demon Souls deserves as much credit as Dark Souls 1. And if you haven't had the chance to already, I strongly recommend playing the PS3 original if you have a chance, even if the servers have been long shut down. There's a lot of value in seeing the bleak tone and atmosphere for yourself. If Shadow of the Colossus Remake is anything to go by, I have very high hopes for Demon Souls Remake because they are both made by Bluepoint Games. There's a lot of potential for new enemies, different behavior, side quests, locations, etc. What I know of Demon's Souls could be changed all for the better, and for that I am very excited. Not only do I get to revisit one of my favorite games of all time, but given a chance to look at it from a new perspective. Demon's Souls is an absolute must.